Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savage and peep the babbling. Got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know, sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know, sometimes it gets heated. Welcome back in, guys, to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Colin and Scott, even though the nameplate on there does not reflect that, it is Colin and Scott. And we want to thank everybody again for joining us. Today's topic is one that has been, well, a little bit heated, for lack of a better term, between Colin and I, and we wanted to bring it to you guys. And I wanted to discuss this topic with someone that has an opposing view that actually knows what the hell they're talking about. (laughs) So... Sting versus The Undertaker. It is the one fantasy match we never got in professional wrestling. It was speculated on the brink of happening. But honestly, between the two on today's episode, we're going to be discussing who the bigger star was between The Undertaker or Sting. So, Colin, I know you and I differ in opinion on this. Why do you feel... The Undertaker is the bigger star than Sting. Um, I think his eras are are better overall than what Sting has. Sting Sting obviously has iconic characters, um, but I think Undertaker's character arcs are better. They both have weak ones. Um, I would say probably we both agree Wolfpack Sting is probably the weakest of them, Um, and I think we can both agree that uh, Biker Taker, is the weakest of them. And I think Taker's Taker's, um, biker phase was slightly better than Wolfpack Sting. Um, Undertaker had obviously the luxury of being in the better um, wrestling companies throughout um, WCW collapse. TNA was never on WWE's level. Um, AEW has not been on WWE's level. Um, So, as far as star power, Taker just had the luxury of being in the best wrestling company, um, and that realistically puts him in that in that category of stars. Um, I know he's in a situation where, because he was um, in the biggest company, that he had to compete against a lot more people versus Sting, who really was the end-all, be-all in most competitions. Maybe not so much in WCW, because you had Hulk and a, and a couple of those others towards the later end of WCW's thing. But overall, I think Taker just had the better overall career. WrestleMania-wise, he was undisputed, the best WrestleMania uh, wrestler of all time. There's really no argument. Um, I could Sean, say Shawn Michaels. Shawn... Sean had incredible matches, but longevity and, you know, overall, Undertaker just has way more. Well, wrestling once a year would pick up the body, <laughs> yes. Well, and, and, and Sean retired. <laughs> okay. By, by Taker. <laughs> okay, so let's, we'll, we'll go by, if we're going by longevity of the career, Sting wins. Oh, like, yeah. Sting just recently, a, a month or so ago, retired. But they both have had, again, iconic careers. And I look, you, it's a matter of opinion. You can't go wrong either way. There's, this isn't the law of God that <laughs> Sting is better than The Undertaker or vice versa. My case for why Sting is better than The Undertaker, it is one thing that you had mentioned. They both had pop eras that they were in. They, they were both incredibly popular. However, if you go back and look at the Monday Night Wars, which was arguably up until now the hottest period of professional wrestling of all time. In that era, in their respected companies, Undertaker was never the guy in WWE. He was never the top guy in WWE because Austin was around. And you could argue... He wasn't the second guy in the company either because there was The Rock and at some points, Shawn Michaels. Taker was in the top five, but he was never the top guy. WCW, on the other hand, now, yes, 
I am willing to admit Hulk Hogan, one of the biggest names in professional wrestling. And when he went to WCW, had a direct impact on Sting's usage and popularity. However, the Crow Sting, which breathed all that fresh life into Sting, Sting was the top guy in WCW. He was the number one babyface. And there was a period of time within the Monday Night Wars, Sting might have been the most popular guy in professional wrestling, even more so than Stone Cold Steve Austin. But that might have been right before Austin really hit that stride and was the number one most popular wrestler in professional wrestling. But my take is, Undertaker was never the guy in WWE, the standalone guy. It was Sting in WCW. He was the, the number one guy. Matches, I feel Sting has had more important, like Sting's matches have felt more important throughout the course of, of his career. Taker's had some big ones. Taker's had some monumental matches, all the Shawn Michaels matches the rivalry with stone cold steve austin matches with triple h like he's had a legendary career as has sting mm -hmm. but sting's matches always felt more important now granted sting was involved in the most important match in a company's history for wcw granted they completely screwed the pooch and led to the downfall of the company that wasn't sting's problem <laughs> and it wasn't sting's problem that he wasn't tan and he showed up at the <laughs> wcw starcade and he got screwed later in the evening by backstage bullshit. But I digress. I digress. You're going to be all right over there? No, 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 I'm not. I mean, it is hard to compare the two because neither one of them really was in the same company at the same time for any extended period of time. Um, Sting only was in w or WWE for a cup what? of coffee. Yeah, like a couple months, maybe, you know, six, eight months, and then he got hurt. Um, and it's one. His one WrestleMania match was all backstage nostalgia bullshit as well. Um, it's obviously I'm kind of taking the piss at him with you know Undertaker's WrestleMania thing because <laughs> he never really was in he was in one WrestleMania match and Triple H kind of screwed and the backstage people kind of screwed him. He it's a theme with Sting. It, it's one of those things where is sting a great wrestler of course you could you could argue he should be on the mount rush more of, of wrestlers all time he always played for the wrong teams in honesty can can you argue with it though wwe won everything so he played for the wrong teams he he played for wcw which lost by 2000 tna was never competitive at any point aew's got flashes I, I but they've never been big. It, and if you're, we're looking at star power, and you've got to say this is an argument about star power, Taker played for the best team. You're going to be a bigger star if you play for the best team. Sting was great. Sting, again, one of the best wrestlers of all time. He played for the wrong teams. His star value is going to be diminished by playing for the wrong teams just because Taker always had the bigger elevation by being on the best team. I, I won't completely diminish the fact that undertaker played for a superior company wrestled for a superior company in wwe but again during that time period where sting was like white hot taker was also there the same time <laughs> like sting sting was still up here and, and wwe was like right here sometimes here but ultimately yes undertaker did wwe is the most successful wrestling company to ever exist regardless of your feelings about them mm -hmm. he joined and here's the thing when he went to tna they were sort of getting out of their embryonic stage as a company they were in their fledgling years to elevate the talent in the company they had a lot of young talent talent that is now the main event roster of <laughs> wwe yeah aew again young upstart company i think sting joined them at the tail end of year one i believe so it was very early on in the the, the stages of aew but still a big deal still a main attraction still moving tickets maybe not so much now but again unfortunately aew doesn't do the numbers that wwe does like they're just not there yet 
And Sting did help. He played a major role in helping launch AEW once he got there. But if you also look at the impact on the retirement matches, Undertaker never really had a retirement match. He had a, <laughs> he had a, a, a movie trailer with AJ Styles yeah. Yeah. where the Undertaker happened to show up. That's not all his fault. That, that, no, it, it's mostly COVID. No, no, I'm not going to let that slide because people were <laughs> wrestling during that. He, he ain't going to get that excuse. He could have went in the ring and had a tra- – he was with AJ Styles. <laughs> Would you get out of here? That man could have a match with the, the, the light that we have for the podcast. But I'm not arguing that point. <laughs> Sting, Sting was protected and booked in such a manner and a smart manner in AEW to hide the fact that he is older, that he's not as mobile, as athletic as he once was. Sting's retirement match is not even close in comparison to Undertaker's. Like, but again, that doesn't dictate the star power. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> we're, we're looking for the crowd reaction. And that's where I think Sting wins because at no point in Undertaker's career did he ever get the reaction to his entrance that Sting did. Sting, Sting had better entrances on a Monday Nitro than what Taker had for some pay-per-views. Dropping out of the... He dropped out of a damn helicopter. What more do you want? <laughs> That's because Undertaker... Panama City. Undertaker's not allowed to be that high. He's a demon. He comes from the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Mythology <laughs> logic for Colin's point. <laughs> I mean... Take her light shit on fire with lightning. I, I think that's super cool. He's just got a bunch of fucking birds. Ooh, crows. <laughs> and vultures. <laughs> there were vultures. <laughs> yeah, well, vultures. I, I think uh I think buzzards are cooler. And uh <laughs> but we're not gonna we're, 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 not, we're not gonna talk about um yeah, I I mean my personal opinion is Obviously, it's hard to argue because they were never in the same company for that long. And and I think Taker, I disagree with your take on on um, entrances. I think Taker's had some incredibly iconic entrances, especially his WrestleMania 25 entrance with Shawn Michaels, one coming from the heavens, one coming from the ground, you know, demon. Ooh, uh, um, I think Taker was more of an intimidating presence than Sting. I like Sting's, like, the like six months to a year where you know he, he was up Hulk... in the rafters and, you know, hanging out. You know he sent Hulk Hogan his head on a zipline, right? <laughs> that would intimidate me. I'm just saying. Somebody <laughs> sent me my head on a zipline. i probably locking the doors and putting the couch against the wall. I mean, we could talk about uh, Taker in the 90s when he was kidnapping people and and stringing him up. Okay, so Taker's a felon. So that's <laughs> where we're, we're, we're going to go with this. I mean, that'd be pretty intimidating to me. I'd be a little, I'd be a little scared about that. Um, if we're, yeah, if we're looking at star power, because if we look at wrestling acumen, I think Sting is better than Taker. Really? Uh, okay. I, I, I love take, Sting. I think I, Taker is great. I think Sting's slightly better. But really? They're, they're, they're both. They're both really close. I think Sting's tiny, tiny bit better. My my only knock with Sting, and I know I'm supposed to be defending him. <laughs> well, <we're... laughs> my only knock is that Sting and Ric Flair have had the same match since 1988. But kind of so is Taker. <laughs> well, I'm talking about when Sting and, and under uh, Sting and Ric Flair would fight. They had the same match since 1988, but. Sting had tried talking Flair into doing something different. And Flair's exact words were, when you go to a concert for the Beatles, you want to hear the hits. You want to see the greatest mm-hmm. hits. And if we don't do these spots, I feel like we're cheating the crap. Flair's the vet. You listen to Ric Flair. He's calling the match. Sting tried to get some different stuff in over the years. Rick was really set in giving them the same match because it. De- that's the thing. That's what you can't argue because Rick was yeah. right. The match delivered when they got it in the ring. They got the same high-level reaction. The crowd still popped. They still booed Ric Flair. They still cheered Sting. It worked. Flair was right, all things considered. Taker, in the beginning, was a terrible professional wrestler. He was garbage. (laughs) Utter, just trailer trash. But he got immensely better by 
90, like around 98 is when Taker really started making those in-ring improvements. You're like, damn, like he's, that's when he kind of became a, a bigger complete package as a, as a wrestler, but sting always more athletic, always faster, quicker, could do the cooler moves. Granted, Taker doing what he could do, walking the top rope, super cool. Somebody his size, you never saw do that. But Sting with the, the Stinger Splash, the drop kicks, the impressive feats of strength. Sting was up there too. Yeah. Well, and, and Taker, you mentioned Taker being garbage the first couple of years. In fairness, that was like, he was just a gimmick. He was, a, and, and 90s, early 90s WWE was garbage. It was mostly just stupid gimmicks. They got scared because of the steroid scandal. So we're, we're, we're shuffling out very large men, but not muscular large men, just people who have not had a diet in their entire life. Um, no offense to them. We don't but... body shame on this podcast. Colin. I know, but you look at it. They went from, you went from your Hulk Hogan's and you know your Ultimate Warriors to like just – not the complete opposite you know you're doing sumo wrestlers and that sort of deal um the gimmicks were not great um taker's gimmick was pretty decent for the, it was pretty good for the time and then it just kept improving and then the biker thing happened and it pooped out um but yeah i think i think sting is just overall a slightly better wrestler and as far as like doing the same match over and over again Buddy, that's what Roman Reigns has been doing for the past four years. You and we're be, still <laughs> you be respectful of the tribal chief. <laughs> we're still dealing with it to this day. It's making a boatload of money. Exactly. See, so you can't really argue like you do the same match over and over again. Like iconic matches for them, like Taker's got not one but two not one but two matches with, with Sean. Um the the match with Lesnar at thirty was Honestly, you could say it's iconic at this point. His Hell in a Cell um, match with with Brock Lesnar at No Mercy was also great. Is one of it, it honestly, I believe, one match of the year. His back to backs with Triple H were both incredibly well received. I felt like, especially the second one in Hell in a Cell. I mean, um, what? Okay, here's the thing. I know we're speaking in in hypothetical. Let's say Sting went to WWE early much earlier than than he did. Right after WCW, let's say. Not even that. Let's say like in the ninety. <laughs> When his contract was up, because there were talks, it just never came to fruition. Yeah. I do think if he would have went, WWE would have held it. That would have been a glass ceiling. They would not have allowed him to be in the top, regardless of no. anything. He'd have been top five. I do think one of the selling points in the back to not put Sting and Undertaker in the ring, they knew who was going to get cheered more. <laughs> they would have cheered Sting more. I think huh. it, I think you you would have split the audience for one. Yeah, I think it'd have been a I don't think it'd have been a double cheer. Like <clears throat> But I, you wouldn't have had it wouldn't have been there would have been politicking. That's the thing. Like that would have ruined this. Yeah. Because WWE would not have wanted Undertaker to look weak. They would not have wanted him to I'm certainly would not have lost the sting. Um, not during the streak. Not during the streak. And he could have got like a SummerSlam in there, maybe a Survivor Series. Wasn't going to mm -hmm. win at WrestleMania. But if you go back and look, though, at the accolades of Sting, I believe he's held more championships throughout the course of his career than The Undertaker. Yeah, I don't think Taker really wanted or needed a bunch of titles, though. But again, that's mm -hmm. the thing, like his gimmick, like when he would even carry the title out, he'd drug it. He wasn't concerned with earthly possessions yeah. for his character, which that's awesome. He had a character that didn't need the title. That's really important for good longevity, which Undertaker had mm -hmm. really good longevity. So did Sting. Yeah. But Sting also was a part of professional wrestling, like in WCW, where they really pushed the older guys, like the elder statesmen of, of Hogan and, and Flair, Luger. Uh, Goldberg was in there, not an elder statesman, but he was a he was a sideshow attraction. Mm -hmm. That was that was the priority. He was a sideshow attraction. He brought money. But and both both loyal mm -hmm. to the end to their mm -hmm. respected companies. Uh, Sting was there from open to close. Undertaker got there uh, late late eighties, think early nineties. I think ninety one was like his first. He, he I think he, was it eight or nine that he was his first match. 
I think it was WrestleMania nine, but I don't remember. I guess the other big <laughs> thing that you can you, that goes into this, and this will be our final talking point here, ironically, is promos. Who had the better speaking? Not vignettes, because I will concede, um, cinematography wise, WWE's kind of fucking untouchable when it comes to that. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> um, WCW <laughs> spent all of their money on contracts, not yeah. Uh, cinematography <laughs> but i will say like when they're talking with their within their characters sting didn't need to talk for a year and a half sold out everywhere he went undertaker wasn't a talker either wasn't a talker <laughs> he had paul bear and then he barely talked but the american badass promos we'll, we'll look at that because i think that's, that's the only one i think that is the most fair to judge this on and i will say undertaker and the american badass on the mic was really good he could talk you into wanting to see the match. He could make your uh, emotions manipulate. Sting always came in high energy. He was that lovable, over-the-top baby face that made him a star. <clears throat> but as he got into the Crow Sting, he changed it up. Yeah, Joker Sting, those promos were always hysterical. Like That might have been the most charismatic mm -hmm. Sting was ever in his career. <clears throat> but on the mic, I kind of think it's a push because, like, they needed to speak and not speak certain ways mm -hmm. to establish their character and push what they were doing. So I'm going to say that's kind of a draw in that area, but I, I think still uh, final point when it comes to star power, overall star power, um, I think Sting is just a bigger star. He got better reactions. He was booked in more important matches throughout his career. He had more important storylines than The Undertaker, more meaningful not to take away with the under from the undertaker's career incredible career anybody would want a, a, a one 21 21 and 0 at wrestlemania if that was the <laughs> if that was the career yeah that that's that's a damn good one but yeah. i don't call it as we uh come to the conclusion of this episode is there anything that you would like to add in as a final take i i just think i think they're both very very strong candidates this is a hard argument to make you you're not wrong here either side um and i think that's one of the biggest things is that it doesn't matter if you think sting is the biggest star more you, power to right but if if you're if you think undertaker is a bigger star more power to you you're not really wrong here it's an opinion um i just think if you look at star power you got to look at which person worked for the biggest company and made a big impact at that company. Sting made a big impact with all the companies he worked for. None of them were remotely close in the long run to WWE, and Taker made a just as big of an impact, in my opinion, on WWE as Sting has made on all the companies he's worked for. So then it just goes to which company was bigger. WWE, in comparison, is bigger than WCW, AEW, and TNA. And nwa and whatever else sting worked for he worked for a lot of companies so um sting was always a big name um and it's a shame we never got a match between the two i think it was the promos and the especially if it's a wwe the cinematography and all the, the everything leading up would have been phenomenal i don't know how the match would have gone depends on what era um i feel like it would have had the only chance sting had to win at wrestlemania against undertaker at any point would have had to have been after the streak was broken so i think we would have needed to see it then yeah i think that's fair uh mm -hmm. so we run out of time here for this episode guys in closing thank you guys so much for everything all the uh support we love it guys we appreciate you uh definitely stay tuned we got a heck of a lot more content to pump out we're just back from squared circle expo we're getting back in, in the groove of things um i would plug the live stream for raw tonight but by the time this goes up it'll be after monday <laughs> so that would be pointless to put that in here but anyway guys for all of us here at heat of shenanigans podcast Everybody out there, stay heated, and we will see you on the next